right. All right. We are live now. So this is Indie Talk with Jesse and Jaron featuring the return of downtown PD Brown. So how's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Been going to, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome to have you back. Uh, forgot when exactly we had you on, but it was a few months ago. You were talking about just the, I mean, we went from the beginning, started talking about the start of your career and steal the main and then AWF at below zero. And pretty much uh, today, just uh, doing updates and seeing what's going on. So, yeah. Yeah, ready for a big summer. And I know there's a lot of AWF shows this summer that I'll be on. Uh, Below Zero always has awesome shows. Uh, we'll be tagging with NDS. So that should be a lot of fun. We all like to party party. So uh, going against uh, some really good Nebraska guys that I've never been in the ring with. So I'm really excited about that, too. Okay. Oh, they're Nebraska guys? Wow. I believe so. I think they're, yeah. They, they, uh, it seems like they run with uh, Jason Strife. And he, I know he's around that area, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of Jason Strife and uh, Magnum Pro. So, yep. Like, yeah, yeah the Magnum really. Pro guys. Yep, but they seem solid. They're all a lot bigger than us, so that should be very interesting. <laughs> but six-man tags always are interesting. You can do a lot of uh, fun things in those. So, uh, And then mm -hmm. uh, this Friday, I'll be in uh, Waterloo, Wisconsin, uh, at Frozen Tundra Wrestling. So that should be a lot of fun. They're always a good time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I've been – Keep it up with what you're doing, and yeah, really excited about the the below zero stuff. I've, uh, I mean, it's been pretty much new territory. I've been the two or three shows now. I know you've been on some of them, and it's uh, yeah, it's cool to see where they're going and uh, how that's working. So, yeah, yeah, I really like that promotion. Uh, it's run really well, and um, I think they've got a lot of good things ahead of them. So, they, and this big next show should be their biggest for their one year anniversary. So, I'm very excited to be a part of it. Uh, yeah, the, I was gonna just, just gonna say that the the one year anniversary of Below Zero Wrestling that is really cool to hear, and yeah, it looks like a great show that they got. So yeah, they accomplished a lot in one year, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. I'll let you go, Jesse. All right. So May twenty second, you're going to be in St. Charles, Minnesota. Are you prepared for that? Oh yeah. Uh, so this show's been rescheduled two other times. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully it actually finally happens May twenty second. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I think I'm scheduled to face Stonehenge again. So we'll finally have our <laughs> eye flip match. It'll be myself versus uh, Stonehenge and uh, my former friend uh, JJ Rogue, the one who betrayed me in my, our Elk River Street fight. So should be a lot of fun. Um, my main strategy. I'm probably gonna you know. Definitely, I want to beat up Stonehenge as much as possible, hurt him as much as possible. Just want it's more like therapeutic at this point, where I just want to like rid myself of the hate I have for him. So maybe I need to do that with violence. And JJ, I think I just need to teach him a lesson because he made the wrong choice. And if I can make them both say I quit, I don't, I don't, I still need to figure out the game plan. I don't want to give away my game plan, but if I can make them both say I quit at the same time, that that'd be <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you could do that, that definitely would be a, a huge uh, highlight of that night. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but I'm going to try. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun. Though. <laughs> it should be a great yeah. show. I, I know all the guys who were on the original card should be on the card. So it's a bummer that it had to be delayed. But, uh, yeah, it's, it'll happen. Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what was it? Uh, I think a number of weeks ago now, we were actually uh, talking to Mr. Stonehenge. And, uh, yeah, he was talking a little bit about you and how you, you should have, like, joined the program and got with the program and uh, just, uh, I guess, sacrifice yourself or something. I don't know. He was uh, – yeah, he had a lot of words. He was just like, I'm going to beat up Petey Brown the next time I get my hands on him and all that. So, Yeah. Stonehenge is full of a lot of things, crap included, <laughs> and a lot of words. So he just mm -hmm. talks and talks and talks. And the way I boil it down to is a sign of respect. This whole thing goes back to, you know, I have a lot of respect for Kyle. A lot of people don't know. Kyle actually started setting up the ring at Steel Domain. Um, he has 
he has a form of autism. He used to weigh like, I think he'd be close to like 300 pounds and through hard work, determination, going to the Academy, working his butt off, he's become like the elite person in Minnesota. Cause now with, you know, a lot of people are, are rising up to other, you know, levels of competition or moving out of state. I, I consider him definitely top five. He's very impressive, but he's also super vicious in the ring. So I had a bunch of respect mm-hmm. for him when he became champion. Uh, and then, the way he became champion, uh, it was a little questionable, but he found a way, and then he aligned himself with Stonehenge, a dude who's just like a, a human leech. He wasn't having any success. He was an AWF even before that happened. So he's literally Kyle's his meal ticket. So do I want to be someone's meal ticket when I've already got a ticket to the show? Like, no. Like, I'm, I'm one of AWF's main guys, so why would, not, why would I join a pro- the program, follow everything they say, be their lackey and not be me uh, like end of the day it wouldn't be me so that's why i said no and i said no i think close to two years ago and he still has this you know this this thing against me and i'll, I'll be completely honest he got underneath my skin like he talks trash a lot you see some online but there's a lot like a backstabbing talk like that literally he got one of my friends to turn against me a dude that i helped bring into awf turn him against me so it's like yeah well got a little bit of sour grape so there's 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 animosity I have towards Stonehenge. There's animosity I have towards JJ Rogue. That's why I'm excited to get the I quit match. I'm hoping for my own like mental health and sanity that like that is it. Mm-hmm. I just let go. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't. He won't let go. I know he's not mature. <laughs> so, but if I yeah. can make him, you know, see a different side of me, you know, I'm I'm not the biggest, like twice my size. But if I can make him say I quit, maybe he'll finally mm-hmm. uh, give it a get, give our beef a quit and just end it and just move on. I mean, the program's still <laughs> killing it. Like, Nick Nelson still has a, the T- AWF TV title, and uh, Stonehenge and Nick are also in the tag team tournament next month. So they could be having, they could be strapped. Like, Stonehenge could be champion by the time uh, we face each other. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, like you said, Kyle Pro, I, I remember him uh, in the early days as he was a, uh, uh, like his early career in 2017, he did steal the main stuff, and I thought great wrestler and doing his thing. And then years later, AWF becomes a champion, the whole program. And I mean, they've pretty much taken over wrestling, but I guess not in the, the, the best of ways, I guess. But they're, I guess, they're doing their thing, and you have to teach them, uh, teach them something the next time. And so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, Nick is always like a pompous ass. Like that's, that's his thing. He's, he comes from, he's, he's rich. Yeah. He's lazy. He all, he comes from money and he just expects everything to be handed to him. So for him to join the program, that seemed like a layup. It's like, Hey, let me join some other like-minded, you know, douches. And, but mm-hmm. Kyle, the thing is like, he doesn't need it. That's the sad thing. Like he has friends in me. He has friends in NDS with, you know, Levy and Kyle or Levy and Riley. And he could really be, he could still be champion and do things the right way, but he, he doesn't, and he makes AWF a toxic place. Mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, the last the last show that I know, uh, so, or we were talking to Stone Edge before uh, the show happened, but uh, he was talking about how they did the uh, the karaoke night. Uh, what are your thoughts on on that? I don't know what Stonehenge's day job is, but he should stick to just not singing because they were singing like, oh man. I, I, I'm I'm gonna just stop it there. I'll I'll just say like maybe he should like Millie Vanilli it and just lip sync next time, and just mm-hmm. not just not sing ever again. It works. <laughs> See, it works. Like it, he he is good. He's good at doing a couple of things. He's good at get people talking about him because he wants the attention all the time. He's good at annoying people getting under their skin. Evidence me. Usually I'm chill. I hate drama, but uh, he's definitely gotten yeah. under my skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems like he's uh, he's yeah he's he lo- definitely likes the attention from uh, what I can see. So that's definitely a truth right there. So it's know. weird because you, you know you have that that like the little man syndrome where they're like you know or Napoleon syndrome where little guys always try to act bigger than they are. You know, so they so they seem stronger, more fierce, get more attention. This dude's like six five, six six, and he acts like he has little man syndrome. So he's definitely compensating for something. <laughs> That, mm-hmm. my dad's a psychologist so that's my best read on stonehenge oh okay yeah yeah, yeah I had to a little... psychiatric read on him psychiatric reads yeah. yeah 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 uh just wanted to check the comments here uh 
But what Bronson says, it's about to be a PD party up in here, and I believe it is. So, yeah, yeah, buddy. Uh, shout out, Bullet. Congrats on uh, getting on time, uh, time Bomb. That's really cool that you got an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was actually there. He, there's a little bit of story. He told. He originally told us that uh, – or told me that he had to go to work, and then he came out, and then I was like, oh, he meant work, as in going to <laughs> wrestling a match against uh, – Damon Spriggle, so he got a little beat up, but I got he made his uh, time bomb debuts, so yeah, yeah, def definitely proud of him. I know he's putting the work, and uh, also mm -hmm. I saw the video he put like a uh, him taking a like a pull in clothesline from Damon, and then Pat Tanaka, his trainer, taking the same type of bump. It was yeah, he definitely he definitely got his head cl cleaned off. Damon definitely took him to the woodshed, but look, he's mm -hmm. here. A week or so later and typing on a computer so he's not that messed up so that's good mm -hmm. yeah, call for your yeah. rematch bullet <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i think uh bullet definitely needs a, a rematch with spriggle and then uh even shane black because i guess uh shane black and uh david spriggle or i get it looks like they're a tag team now they were kind of just uh they're they were being pretty much like the program, kind of, kind of a uh, boy, and if, if you will. So, yeah, they, they threw him down a uh, set of stairs. So that was kind of, kind of sad to hear. So, yeah. Hey, he, he's back here. He's he's on on the stream though. He's still uh, still mm -hmm. kicking at least. So yeah, big humble. That's the name of their tag team. They're actually the battleground tag team champions. Oh okay. Oh, okay. that yeah. makes sense. So yeah. Um, someone who, who we had on earlier, or I had on earlier, we were, I was talking with, uh, Academy wrestler, so fresh. Uh, do you have any thoughts on him? Uh, I mean, I heard he's got his head shaved. I mean that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I he's guess that nice, he's a nice kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, well, you go, Jesse. All right, so I was watching on uh, YouTube. Uh, there seems to be a little issue between Kyle Pro and Tony Danucci. Are you allowed to speak on that, or is that between them? I think from the outside, I think Tony doesn't like – Tony's very old school in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. Some, some ways good, some ways annoying, and some ways bad. <laughs> but uh, one old school thing is because he came up – wrestled in Memphis, wrestled with, you know, a lot of the top legends or, you know, same was in the same locker room. Respect's a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. So Kyle does not show respect, just like I said with the program. Doesn't show the respect. And Tony wants that respect, especially out of his champion. The night or the day when uh, Kyle Pro became champion, Tony wanted to shake his hand saying congrats. And uh, he got slapped in the face. So Tony offered his hand, slapped in the face. So uh, and Kyle continued to talk trash about Tony for uh, months and months and, years, and like multiple years. And mm -hmm. uh, Tony wanted payback. So even though Tony's the boss, uh, I guess he can get away with it because who's going to fire him if he's the boss? But yeah, uh, I think true. the locker room definitely enjoyed him giving a little slap because I guess Tony still, like you watch the video, he still offers his hand up for a handshake. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, if he's stepping in the ring during a match, you might have like you no know, nefarious reasons. But I mean, I can't talk because like during the match, I ran out and I beat up Stonehenge. I gave him a little uh, parties over, so I can't I can't throw stones. I did the same exact thing. People are just in the AW locker room, just fed up with the program. They're a bunch of babies. They're a bunch of prima donnas, and they make it a toxic locker room. So anytime mm -hmm. we can get, get a little payback and get a little taste of medicine, you know, we're down to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, a bullet says, hopefully one day – I'll be in AWF. I'd love to work PD. Such a good dude. So, thank you, man. Yeah, uh, bullet. Show up to a show. We can see what what can happen. So, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think right now we're coming up uh, almost on the two year anniversary of uh, you and uh, Mister Roman Reigns coming face to face. Uh, <laughs> your thoughts on Roman right now? I mean, he's killing it. Uh, I don't know if he's hurt. Like, I don't like the dirt sheets or whatever, but, like, it, they said, like, oh, his arm was hurt at WrestleMania. That's why the match got cut short. Uh, so you haven't mm -hmm. seen him wrestle since. But, I mean, he's killing it, dude. I'm so I'm so happy that uh, he finally turned heel. And, sadly, he wasn't heel when he hit me. But, I mean, I was yeah. like, it was a payday. I mean, I had to work for Baron Corbin. He was the one paying the checks. He was assigned the checks. 
And I get mm-hmm. the chance. It's like if you get a chance to get paid and get a chance to be on Fox, I mean, you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Whether you're working for, uh, you know, Baron Corbin, whether he's happy Corbin, King Corbin, a silly Corbin, whatever he's called by now, you know, you, you just mm-hmm. take you take the gig, you take the booking. So I, I, don't, I don't blame him. I hit him first. I'll, I'll give him that. But, you know, he's got me down twice. So it's like, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Or fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Maybe I shouldn't have came at him twice. But if he ever wants to have a rematch, you know, they're coming back in uh, June. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's my home arena. So I'm down. I'll throw it on the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> PD versus Roman at, on SmackDown. So yeah. <laughs> he might be the head of the, the table, but I'm at the head of the turntables. So. He's got to watch out. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, uh, my brother got tickets for that, I believe, yesterday. So I'll definitely uh, nice. be at that. So, yeah. Be in my uh, second SmackDown and second WWE event. So that'll be really cool to see. So Very yeah. cool. You'll be on summer break and stuff. So be back home and bust him a trip, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, cool. it'll be a lot easier to get there. So. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I've uh I've been still going to wrestling shows, but it's just uh, definitely a lot longer of a drive. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be easier. Yeah. It's easy for a time bomb and below zero because I it only takes like 21 minutes to bike. So yeah, yeah. that's super easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um what else was there? Uh um yeah, so speaking of Roman Reigns and WrestleMania, I think you were at WrestleMania, right? I was not. So I was down in Austin. It was a giant oh. store. Oh. <laughs> oh, I was um, like, my girlfriend and oh. I were uh, on vacation. So it was kind of like there was some FOMO where I'm like literally three hours away from uh, Dallas. And a couple of wrestlers oh. were like, you should come down and party. I'm like, you guys realize <laughs> three hours away. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we, were just, we were trying to get away because it's just so hot out, or so like cold out here, and just so the weather's been so crappy yeah. in Minnesota. So I was like, I just needed some like break from mental break from the cold weather. So it was really nice. It was my first time in Austin, so definitely recommend it for a vacation spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. See the swirl. Yeah, it, was- it worked. I, I literally left the <laughs> school day around it. So I mean, yeah, uh, you, you, you definitely fooled me. I was like. I mean, he did that promo for Shell Shot in uh, Austin. I was like, maybe he's coming down from Dallas to Austin. I was like, oh, maybe. Yeah, so, you never know, yeah. right? Keep, always got to keep him guessing, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you do know him or not, but I believe uh, uh, Jossie was there. Do you have any thoughts on him? Jossie's awesome. Uh, he's got a larger-than-life personality. He's great in the ring. Uh, I mean, he was like, what? He was like a stripper on Raw? So that was yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. if wrestling doesn't work out. He's got he's got Magic Mike in his pocket. He's got those skills. I think he's got the personality for that too. Maybe he could moonlight as a you know male entertainment. Or maybe that that's maybe that's his job title. He's just be male entertainment and just leave it up to his planner. <laughs> but yeah, no, no yeah. Jaws great. Jaws awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember my friend uh, showing me that, and I was like, I had to go back and watch him like. Oh yeah, he's he's stripping right there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely in his natural element. He loves the camera. So <laughs> he does love the camera. Yeah. Uh, someone who also also was part of that segment was uh, Miranda Gordy. I think she was one of the girls like drinking or something. She's just standing there. I'm like, oh, huh. okay. So just chilling out. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just one of those so, uppity club girls, like you. Do you know my dad? My dad owns this place. <laughs> my dad's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I got, I got that vibe. So, yeah. Um. Uh. Oh, Bullet says, "Uh, P, how did that clothesline from the big dog feel?" It hurt. It, re- yeah. it had, like yeah. It it hurt. I don't know if like mm-hmm. the 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 hit hurt more than just the impact on the ground. Just the the hit to the. Who? Yeah, I was seeing stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so 100 don't recommend. But I mean, if I could be on TV again, and get hit like that, I'd, I'd do it. Well, you know why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. Makes for good content. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I remember posting you uh, posting that a few times. I'm like, it's definitely good content. Getting clotheslined by Roman, so on um, yeah. WWE television. So get that, yeah. get that Roman Reigns clout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, um, uh, oh, well, it says he, he laid it in. Yeah, he, he definitely did from what I saw. So <laughs> he got me. He definitely got, he made it count. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else is, uh, uh, what are some new things that you have learned recently in wrestling? Just like, uh, style wrestling or anything or, yeah. Um, I would say like, Cause what I do, cause I don't have access to a ring really right now with like training wise. So I try to like roll around with, you know, my opponent or, you know, just anybody, you know, at the beginning of the match, just kind of feel them out. Um, or, or just, you know, roll around with a friend before in the ring or just watch, I pretty much watch all WB, all AEW and then some indie stuff too. So I try to take everything in, um, and just listen to podcasts too, is just how to put together matches, how to, uh, you know, really connect more with the crowd. Cause I think it's more with me about get crowd interaction. I can't do the things Dante Martin or Darius Martin can do flippy flip wise. And I, I'm not strong, like, you know, Brandon Gore or like Wardlow or something, you know, like a big guy like that. So it's just finding my niche. Um, I thought about different ways to like, you know, make my character more relatable to certain people. Um, mm -hmm. End of the day though, it's just, I, I'd say the biggest thing I learned is just like not letting the drama get to you and just, just, you know, mm -hmm. like, if you told myself like 10 years ago, it's like, Hey, you're going to be wrestling in front of even like three people like in a ring and I'm getting paid. What? Like, I'd be like <laughs> mine. So just like really just appreciating, like getting these opportunities that it won't last forever. Um, and that I'm very lucky just to be in the ring and just see getting to work really good people is a lot of fun. Um, I was at events last weekend, which was really crazy. It was at a house party in long Lake, Minnesota, which is a really nice neighborhood. And I got to wrestle the system, like one of my favorite guys I get to fight. So it's just it was fun. We were wrestling in front of 30 and 40 year olds who were uh, all dressed out in like 80s stuff. Some people were dressed as Macho Man. Some people were dressed as Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, you name it, like 80s people. And it was fun because like <laughs> system obviously looks like Ric Flair. So we did Ric Flair stuff. Uh, I don't look like really anybody. I guess I have a beard. So I did Macho Man stuff. So just fun. It just like, how can I connect to the crowd? How can I get them to be like in on the joke? Cause it's just like a comedy show almost like I love stand up comedy. And it's like, how can you build on what you said earlier or what was established earlier to make it more entertaining? Cause then everyone's in on the joke. So just make feel people feel welcome and that they're part of the action. Um, Cause mm -hmm. that's, you know, stand up and wrestling are a lot like that. So I've just been trying to just enjoy it more and, you know, give out joy to the people and make them a part of it. Cause you know, that's what makes it cool that's what makes pro wrestling cool is because you can say you suck and the person like if you say you suck to like robert downey jr let's say you just hate iron man you're like you suck he's not gonna be like no i'm iron man i actually i'm awesome it's it, for us <laughs> we can yes. interact with people so if you don't use that element they people can yeah. go watch better wrestling or a better movie or a better tv show they have better but better in their opinion or higher quality mm -hmm. higher budget but like with pro wrestling you're interactive you're part of the show so Mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah answer yeah 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 i think it definitely is important they get the the crowd involved in doing something a uh, chance and all that so yeah yeah like speaking of parties i think there's some loud party outside right now i i just hear screaming and like Whoa, so. hell yeah hopefully it's not like a satanic ritual or anything yeah, I hope not. You open the door, the walls are like bleeding blood. You're like, oh man, what did I miss? I don't know. <laughs> not the rituals. So, oh my god. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. You heard that? <laughs> the Wednesday night. I know there's Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I guess wasted mm -hmm. Wednesday, maybe. I don't know. But I don't know. There was a party day on a Wednesday, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't. When I was in college, there there'd be people who would party every like almost every single day or drink every day, and I'm like. I, call me old fashioned, but I'm sticking to Thursday through Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. It's crazy out right now. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, oh, man. That threw me off a little bit. No, you're good. Um, yeah. All right. Oh, well, you go, Jesse. All right. So, speaking of uh, comedy and wrestling, what do you mm. think of the storyline with uh, Dan Housen and Hook? I think it's awesome. Um, I guess like not like insider baseball or anything like that, but I'm not sure if like Dan Housen can wrestle yet. Cause I know he's like injured. I think he broke his leg like within the last year. So I think it's cool how they're introducing him because he's more of a character than he is a wrestler. 
So I think it's cool they're introducing him. So when he does wrestle, it's a big deal because if you just introduce, like if you didn't know who Dan Housen was and you just watched this dude and started wrestling, like you'd probably be underwhelmed because you'd be like, oh, because like when Finn Balor puts on like face paint or whatever, he's a demon. He like gets to this next level or that, you know, is intense. It's like in, like a movie. But with him, it's more like comedy where it's like a silly horror movie person, which is an awesome gimmick. It's so cool that he does it. Met him in real life. Really nice guy. Um, but I like it. It's like, I, I like how they're establishing Hook to be a true badass and they're really protecting him. And obviously, I mean, if, so, if someone looking like in, you could be like, why is he a badass? He looks like, you know, just a lazy teenager. But it's like, no, if you like step back, he's like has his kid. So it's cool that they have that established. He looks nothing like Taz. He doesn't have like the same gimmick as Taz, but I mean, he's right. got like that, that intensity, that fighting that he's just chill, just ice cold. And then like does Taz's moves or some of them, which is really cool. Like cool throwbacks. So again, right. I'm very long winded. So I guess Stonehenge and I have that in common on some things, but <laughs> hopefully crap's not coming out of my mouth, but yeah, I love it. I think it's cool. It's something that's interesting. And, um, I know like one thing that I really liked uh, about AEW, not doesn't always happen. I wish it happened in WWE too, but like I remember Gangrel saying in a documentary that during the Attitude Era, everybody had a story. That it wasn't just like, here's two dudes just wrestling because wrestling. It's like, it's so, I couldn't imagine how hard it is to write, especially when you have like higher ups changing things like day of or night of. But it'd be cool. Like, it's cool these little storylines. It's like, they're not end of the world storylines. It's not like, the winner of Dan Housen and Hook is going to face, you know, uh, you know, Adam Adam Cole next, or or CM Punk next, or or even you know like, you know, Hangman. But it's like it's just a cool story. It's an easy build. And I think that's what makes him a really good wrestling show because like, I, I watch Raw like the the highlights, but I could not sit there for three hours because there's just not enough storylines that really like hook me. Like there's some fun mm-hmm. things, and I, I'm glad Cody came back. I think that's interesting. I think Cody and Seth's great. Uh, there's some interesting things. I guess it's kind of cool that it can be silly because sometimes WWE takes itself too seriously uh, with a 24-7 title, so I think that's cool. Uh, but I feel like the sad thing is I feel like fans have killed WWE's uh, willingness to go outside the box. Because I feel like mm-hmm. when they go outside the box, they piss off 75% of the people saying, this is stupid, this is a cartoon, this is dumb, it's not realistic. But then like I feel like AEW is willing to do more like outside the box, silly kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I think WWE should, I, I'd say since the PG show, they should lean into silly there. They can have, you know, just have a variety show. Have like, it's like the Muppets have like a, a story going and then silly things happening throughout the night. I don't know. That's how I would look it, but yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in WWE and, uh, it's so weird to keep up with it all, but they're, they it's a lot doing of it. Yeah. It's hard to fill all oh, yes. that content in, in one week. It's like, yeah, literally yeah. Like, like Raw, NXT at six hours, and SmackDown at six hours of content. And UK, yeah. too, which is another hours. Yeah. And if they know the you. Or NXT. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. It's, it's, they've got a unique method of how they – usually you'd think with younger people, they'd be like, okay, we're going to pair you with a veteran. So they because they've had the experience. If something goes wrong, they can lead you to the match. But now it's more like let's put two rookies against each other and have them grow together. Obviously, they have you know practice matches before the show, so they're kind of yeah. working things out. But it's a different approach. Sometimes it works, but other times I'll watch it. And I know a lot of these guys are better than me even. But sometimes I'll watch it. It'll just be very cringy where it's like you can tell botches. And it's just like, oh, man. Mm-hmm. I just wish they would have yeah. kept some of the NXT people to get like some like resemblance of NXT instead of everyone leaving. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, something that's been kind of interesting. It's it's kind of entertaining, but kind of weird at the same time. But uh, the whole Ezekiel Elias younger brother thing. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I dig it. I heard there's a rumor that like he shaved his beard and like Vince is like, oh, I didn't tell him to shave his beard. And then he did it anyway. And they're going to be like, oh, okay, well, here's the story. No, I like, I think that like, I was sad when Elias left because I think Elias could have been like huge. Like the pops yeah. he was getting with like the guitar playing and stuff wasn't like rock s, mm-hmm. but he was like killing it. It was just something different, something cool. And I didn't think it needed to be recreated. Like when he added yeah. Jackson Riker and stuff, I thought that was just not necessary. He could have been fine on his own. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really sad. I'm like, is he? He's yeah. He's got the whole walk with Elias, the guitar, and he's 
Like he's got the cool beard and everything, and they just take that all away. And now he, he just looks like a generic wrestler, even if he is a different guy now. So not even a different character. They say he's a new guy now. So I agree. Yeah. I mean, and they're changing everyone's names so that, like, again, dirt sheets mm-hmm. or whatever. I read them too because I'm a wrestling fan. So, but it's like yeah. where everyone's changing their name because they don't want them to have their like birth names. Mm-hmm. The only yeah. reason I can think of that is like, you know, guys like, let's just say a Tony Nice, uh, he can still use Tony Nice in AEW because that's his like name. But if you change yeah. your name, if, if like WWE would have changed his name, then he can't use his name. Like obviously Braun Strowman cannot be called Braun Strowman. He's called like Adam Shear, like, you know, his real name now. In yeah. The 80s. So that it could just be a marketing thing. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. They've, they've been doing it so much now. Now it's just like the night after WrestleMania, they changed Austin Theory to Theory. I'm like, it just sound, even announcing it, that's got to be weird. It's like one word names are. I don't, know, I don't like sound, that. Yeah. Well, introducing Theory. I'm like, because his like real name is Austin. So I think that's why they did it. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's true. But they were like Austin stuns Austin at WrestleMania. I'm like, and then you just take away Austin. I'm like Austin stuns Theory, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. So it is pretty. Wrestling. Sp- yeah, wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what we deal with now. So yeah. Uh, uh, are going back to AEW. Uh, uh Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood are facing each other in the Owen Hart uh, Foundation Classic. I. I really thought that was a good idea, and I've seen the yeah. the promos for that and everything, so I think it's a good idea with that. I haven't watched it yet. Usually I watch the clips because I don't have cable, uh, so I watch, like, the matches on YouTube, but I'm super excited for it. And I think, like, again, something like it does – it's not the end of the world who wins or loses. Granted, it's a tournament. Like, more cool things like that. I think that's what makes wrestling cool. Like, the story – it's not, like, just two people wrestling, but the story behind it. Or like the implications, you know, make it. So it doesn't even. It doesn't always have to be all or nothing, like a Marvel movie where it's like, whoever wins, the world will change forever. And but it's just like yeah. this is a cool personal story with two guys who came up together who are like not brothers, but are pretty much brothers and are a tag team. They wrestle around the world, wrestle titles. It's, it's an easy storyline, and it's like they they waited and they pulled the trigger at the right time. So I feel like obviously it's hard to like have those every week because you're gonna run out of stories, but. Just yeah, unique things like that I think are cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching like or looking at the old pictures of the, uh, both of them in the in the promos. I'm like, wow, that's what younger <laughs> younger Cash and Dax look like. I'm like, hmm. yeah. So it's just yeah, cool that yeah, cool that they connect stories. But I guess there's only so many stories. So yeah, right. Sorry, my cat's like. Bothered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can hear some meowing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Kitty and wants so to I've got like an arm chair. It's kind of like this or like my <laughs> desk chair. It's got a hole right here and she'll like slink her head in and then like pot. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. I'll be like working from home. I'll be like super focused. And all of a sudden I just I'll have something poke my like elbow. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like totally lose it. Cause like when you're dead focused. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to throw you off. So, yeah, 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 cats, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, shout out Lola. Shout out Lola. <laughs> shout out <Yeah>. Lola. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she gets more right. likes than I do when I post on social media. Like, I'll post like, <laughs> I'll post like, I can't believe it's my six year whatever anniversary, or I just accomplished this, or I'm so happy to wrestle this new company. Be like five likes. I'll be like. Here's Lola sleeping, what she always does. 30 likes, yeah. 40 likes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like their posts are more entertaining. So Yeah, that's true. Can't beat the yeah. entertainment with a cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I don't know. I just somehow find myself like watching a bunch of uh, animal slash cat TikToks, and it's just way more entertaining than some of these dances <laughs> that these teenagers are doing. I'm like, I want to watch that. <laughs> No, yeah. I don't want to watch any of that. But like cat, cat doing a silly thing. Yeah, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen Harbick, aka Jackson Black, says, "Hola, fellas." So, 
Shout out to uh, Jackson right there. So Hola, Jackson. Yeah. He actually uh, had a podcast today, too, and I was watching a little bit of it. It was uh, Wrestle Talk. Uh, he had some uh, Tennessee guys on there and uh, uh, photographers. So that was really cool to see uh, another landscape of wrestling and independent wrestling. So It's yeah. crazy how different the territories are, from, like just mm-hmm. the different nuances and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when we had him on the podcast, and then one of his uh, guys he was feuding with, uh, Johnny, he wanted to come on, and he's like, uh, so are you guys from Knoxville? I'm like, no, we're from Minnesota. And he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, a little farther away. Yeah. A little farther away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he calls it a TV show. It's not a show, podcast show. So <laughs> Yeah, a TV show. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jesse. All right. So, how do you think that the Green Bay Packers will do in the draft tomorrow night? Oh man, I'm hoping they if they could somehow get Debo Samuel from the 49ers, that'd be like my perfect draft. If we could draft mm-hmm. draft or trade even two first round picks for him, that'd be great because I think he's like top five wide receiver and he's still super young. Uh, I just hope with one of the two picks, they draft a wide receiver. Um, I think that'd be great. I, I know they also need a guard uh, to protect Aaron Rodgers and then maybe a defensive end. But I think they're, like, pretty stacked everywhere else. But they need a wide receiver. I'd be cool if it just – let's just draft two wide receivers back-to-back. <laughs> mm, why not? They got Sammy Watkins over uh, the offseason just, like, a couple weeks ago. But if we could trade for somebody, that'd be great because I think they got fleeced on the uh, Devontae Adams trade. Like with how much the uh, the Dolphins gave up for Tyreek Hill, what the Raiders gave up for Devontae Adams. Like I think Devontae Adams is better than Tree Kill just because Tree Kill is great. He's super fast, but he's small. He needs his speed to be good. And he's getting older. He's like almost 30. And Devontae Adams like is a bigger dude, knows how to route, route run better, which that can give you a longer longevity in the NFL. And like their car wanted him so bad. So it's like, we should have had more leverage to be like, you want your old college teammate? Like you have to pay up. And they were trying to get Darren Waller too, uh, the tight end for the Raiders, which would have been awesome. We could have gotten him back, but um, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what they do. They're, they're, people are a lot smarter than me running the Packers organization. So <laughs> let them take the wheel. Maybe they, they might even trade Jordan Love tomorrow. That, <laughs> Ooh, that was, that was startling. Wow. <laughs> Oh like yeah, sorry. That, no, that was one of my dogs. <laughs> oh. I was like, you were talking about Petey's cat. I'm like, that doesn't sound like a cat. What is that? <laughs> Reminds me of that old like phone commercial. Look at this. Yeah, there you go. The, the, the cat and the dog. The animals, so the animals are taking over. <laughs> oh man. Like that one second. Let me, let me feed my cat really quick. She's gonna bother All me right. the whole time. I'll be right oh. back. All yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I better go. I better go check and see if the dog's all right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. With you. All right. Okay. Then there was one. And I'm back. Sorry that. It, okay. that Lola is literally poking at me like every like minute. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Jesse checked on his dog too. So there you go. Animal quick animal break. Animal check. Yeah. <laughs> animal yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should go check on the wild turkeys that are on campus. <laughs> yeah, right. Or check the party. A party of wild turkeys. Yeah. yeah. Wild turkeys drinking wild turkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There are some huge turkeys on campus. I'm like, that is a big boy right there. Yeah, I would not want to be in the same room as a turkey. Yeah, <laughs> hard pass. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Brandon Herrera says, "What's up, PD Brown? What's up, Brandon?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then we got Johnny. Or we got Johnny in the comments. He says, "Uh, PD Brown versus Logan Paul?" Question mark. Huh. Let's make it happen. I mean, I thought he did really good at WrestleMania. He's super athletic. He's got a great mm-hmm. build. He's a big dude. His gear was sick. He even had that rare Pokemon card, too, with the bling. Yeah. So he's got the style yeah. down. I'm sure he'll come back probably at SummerSlam. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Something yeah. like that. 
I thought they would extend it a little bit since the Miz betrayed him, but I guess not. So, yeah. I think they're probably just waiting for a bigger event because it probably costs a lot of money to bring him in. Yeah, that's true. All Speaking of which, the, the, the WrestleMania. <laughs> so, like, uh, ba- I heard yesterday Bad Bunny is going to be in a Spider Man spinoff movie where he's like a, a luchador superhero. So, that should be interesting. <laughs> oh, man. A luchador superhero. Huh? Yeah. Like oh, a Spider Man, I like anti hero or something. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be interesting, oh. that's for sure. It's gonna be Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, it's Rey Mysterio. It's Rey Mysterio <laughs> superhero. Mm, yeah. Uh, Brandon also says, uh, PD Brown, you next in line to take a run at Roman. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's man. the question. I mean, people, the people are asking for it. So, I mean, I'm down if Roman's down. Mm-hmm. I think Shinsuke Nakamura is going to be his next opponent, maybe because like the whole feud with the Usos and stuff. But I mean, we've seen that before. Let's let's do uh, me versus Roman. Could be the quickest yeah. match of all time, but I mean, <laughs> he never pinned me. So that is you're undefeated against Roman Reigns. I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PD versus Paul could be PD Pokemon card versus Logan Pokemon card. There you go. I, I have brand new Pokemon cards just released this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that. I was like, that's really cool. So yeah. I thought it'd be different. I had like a baseball card thing before, and that was I was a little old. I was probably like one or two years old. So I was like, ah, I need something mm-hmm. new. I was like, I don't just want to do like a sports card. Let's do like a Pokemon. I was like, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon. I'm like, ah, Pokemon seems like the most popular, so I'll do that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I bought one of your cards. It was like you and the just the mustache and the purple yep. around it. So, yeah, like my yeah. Freddie Mercury face. Freddie I got Mercury. the mustache and like the red jacket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Good comments, guys. Uh, Jesse. Um. So, has anybody uh, from a nerdy note? contact you about maybe coming in and uh working for them in october with the uh, no, no. no they haven't i actually like was in rochester like a month or so ago and i, I drove by their shop I was like oh yeah i've like heard about them so no i haven't been reached out to but uh i mean it's pretty cool what they're doing so it's, it's yeah cool that it's like a GameStop like shop that also runs or comic book store or whatever that also runs like big events and brings in people or like cons so yeah it's pretty cool mm-hmm. yeah 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 we actually had the owner uh brad uh i can't pronounce his last name but brad and also uh the system together a while back and they were they were talking about their feud and then nerding out and how that works so yeah yeah it's you know, pretty good cool. stuff yeah they're actually uh, for October. They're bringing on uh, bringing in uh, Darby Allen. Uh, have you seen that? That's way cool. Yeah, I'd always love to see Darby Allen. He's definitely an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is a big name right there. And I, yeah, as soon as my friend showed me, I'm like, wow, that is that is definitely awesome stuff right there. Because I mean, usually it's just been like uh, older legends, but now they're bringing in. Uh, they're able to get in younger talent, their active talents. So, yeah, yeah. way cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. What is uh one of your favorite matches that you've had recently? Recently, let me think. Oh man, I'm I'm blanking. I, I've had some fun matches where I was like, oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, just this last weekend was pretty fun against System. We always bring out the best in each other, or we, we can pretty much we like wrestled so many times, like at least twenty times that we like know each other. That we, we know what we're gonna do before the other person does it. And we just kind of feed off each other. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think where else I wrestled. I mean, Stonehenge and I always have some fun matches. Uh, I love beating the crap out of him. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I. I I wrestled Darren Corbin earlier this year. It's always fun to wrestle Darren. Darren's great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Sorry, that's the yeah. one question I'm totally brain farting on. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, actually, uh, I saw Darren Corbin at Time Bomb. He faced uh, uh, Jordan in a street fight. That was that was pretty insane. So. I heard Sandman got involved. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, the Sandman was there. He he hit Darren Corbin with a few kendo sh- uh, stick shots, and then Jordan finished them off with a slam through a, a door. So, yeah, it was pretty wild that night. That sounds like a good night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the pop that Sandman got, that's, that was just in, loud in there. I'm like, oh, God. So, yeah, the nice. Sandman. I saw a couple mm-hmm. pictures of him pouring beer in people's mouths, so I'm like, glad he's still uh, still at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's still doing good. Uh, I went up to meet him, and I was like, hey, I love your work. Uh, it's awesome to meet you. And he's like, you're not even old enough to know who I am. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's just joking about it, and uh, he, he's a good guy. So, yeah. That's cool. He yeah, got was- to uh, interact with him and stuff. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then when I was born in 2002, he was already a big ECW guy, and uh, he was already he's already established at that point. So all these years later, you get to meet him and like, oh, Sandman. So, like, that's yeah. crazy. God, 2002. That even hurts me. I think it was in I think it was in fifth grade in 2002. Oh, <laughs> that's how old I am. Oh man, Petey's getting old too. I know. I think he's. <laughs> I just turned 30 this year, so or this last year. So I turned 31 this year. So it's really uh getting up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll be 20 in a few months, so or more than a few months, but yeah. Oh man. We're all old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get getting up there. Mm-hmm. Enjoy it. Yeah. God, man, yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um uh, PD Brown or Brandon says, PD Brown, do you know any update on Dante Martin's brother status? So, uh, Darius, uh, I do not. Oh, I wish yeah. him the best. I wish him a very fast healing recovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he came back. We were all excited, and then I don't know, know exactly how, how he got hurt again, but it was sad that he got hurt right away. So, yeah, it is. I know he works super hard at recovering so i know he'll work hard to get back there he loves wrestling so Mm -hmm. yeah 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 definitely um i guess uh another top minnesota guy uh got to see him in february in time bomb i think i've seen him like three times now uh aria davari he seems like he's been doing a lot since the whole wwe release and doing aew so yeah yeah, it's cool. Wrestling at NWA, a bunch of other big indie promotions. Mm-hmm. So, and it heard he got a tryout too to be a uh, producer at WWE. So, which he's pretty young for that, it seems like, which is cool. He's definitely a, got an amazing wrestling mind. And whenever you talk to him, you definitely learn something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It was really, really cool to meet him and see how he was like in person that in February. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's pretty chill. Uh, yeah, he seems like a chill dude, and they got yeah, I got a picture with him. Just told him awesome stuff, and he's like, "Thank you." And yeah, hey, he, he faced uh, that night. He faced uh, Eric Cannon, so they they put on a, a classic wrestling match. So of course, yeah. and with those two guys in the ring, it's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Jesse. All right, so if it. Uh came to it where you needed a tag team partner would you re- would you ever reach out to the system and say hey come and help me with these guys oh man it's a good question it's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing mm-hmm. if i was in a super tight spot maybe you know you gotta p- p- people hang on to the past too much and don't let go of things so I'm a big proponent of that, of letting go of the past. And, you know, I guess you don't, you forgive, but sometimes you don't forget. But, uh, right. yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been like two years or so. So, I mean, I got to forgive him. So, I mean, if, if the situation called for it and I needed him, I guess the uh, system of a downtown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that definitely would be really cool to see. So, Yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, or I guess forgiving each other, it was, it's kind of intertwines with, uh, your, si- or the system and yours relationship, but we were, uh, I think a few weeks ago we had, uh, Crixus on and we were talking about, uh, possible, mm-hmm. uh, zero sympathy, uh, uh, reunion and 
he was like, uh, it's pretty much just like, well, we never know. So he seemed open to it, but I don't know. Yeah, I definitely appreciate Crixus's uh, alley oop. He uh, in that big match with the system, he uh, nailed him with a violin. But in all, in all fairness, system was kind of being a dick to him. So when you get to reach that boiling point, it, you definitely don't want to get on Crixus's bad side. That dude's like a jacked, like Spartan warrior. Mm-hmm. He poke you. I think. Get out of here, Lola. Just every awesome. once in a while, kitty attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was gonna be like that's Crixus right there. Yeah, it's Crixus. <laughs> Crixus is also, it's also an anamorph. <laughs> Crixus, oh, form man. of house cat. Form of house cat. <laughs> oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta stop. Mm-hmm. Cats. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, Brandon in the comment section also says. Uh, Petey Brown should reach out to his Cannon Falls boys. Do you know any about that? Anything about that? Uh, I know. So I'm from Cannon Falls, which is like south of the city. So it's right between Rochester and Minneapolis on Highway 52. Uh, Brandon, I think Brandon's from there. Or I know he's from either Rod or Randolph or Cannon Falls. So I guess it's pretty much the same area. So that's the Cannon Falls boys. But yeah, I'm, I'm from Cannon Falls. So it's a very small town, like 4,000 people. Mm. Oh, okay. Got to round up your uh, your Cannon Falls, uh, just anybody there and get face somebody. So. <laughs> right? I got to get yeah. the Cannon Falls posse back together. One second. Yeah. Let's see if I can bring uh, the cat into the room. I'll be right back. Okay. It's a little right. Right. Oh, man. Oh, man. Cat. Cat and dog. <laughs> uh, there she is. Start walking. Oh, I just, yeah. Hmm. Tell tell Brandon he should bring his kid on. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we we got we got to tell uh, PB about uh, when uh, Jerry kidnapped uh, the system. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Shouldn't be any other interruptions. <laughs> Just my cat was a little attacking me. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Jesse was just bringing up the fact that uh, I think one of our very uh, earlier shows we had a well, we we attempted to do a, a zero sympathy tour with our uh, reunion yeah. <laughs> tour <laughs> uh, with uh, uh, with all three of them, but then ended up just being System and Crixus. Uh, System was in the he, he was talking, and then apparently. Uh, Jerry came out of nowhere, nowhere uh, Jerry Allricker, and we can only assume that he uh, kidnapped him. And we, we pretty much did a whole angle with that. Jesse's like, we should put like a wanted poster for Jess or uh, Jerry somewhere. So, uh, yeah, and we did that. <laughs> and we did that. And then, uh, See, it's they, good stories, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, yeah, this like, System gave us the the way to create a story, and we just went through it. I'm like, never hear of a podcast storyline. I'm like, I've never heard of it. So yeah, oh well, right, got got to be different. Got to stand out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, a little bit later, Sterling Bond messaged me saying he was sleeping. So <laughs> yeah, he's a sleeper. Yeah. Um. Uh, talk about how you go about uh, booking. Like, is there a certain organization that you use, or how does that work? How so? Um, I guess uh, just like what what are you looking for when uh, booking? Like, what what guys and what uh, uh, what kind of matches are you looking for to build? Yeah, we've like main guys that we always bring in because they just work well with the the roster and. They're involved mm-hmm. in, uh, you know, different feuds or things like that. So you want to keep those going. Um, and then also you're just looking to bring in new people. You're looking to bring in people like, you know, every once in a while, like vets to help, you know, boost your younger talent. Uh, and then just bring in new and up and coming people who maybe haven't been in Minnesota. Uh, so then you have, you know, their brand, you know, they might be like killing it where they are, but no one's mm-hmm. even in Minnesota. So it gives them a chance to try new things or also, uh, yeah, expand yourself to a new audience. So I look at that too. Um, 
I listen to the talent too, because I know a lot of people on a roster travel all across the country. So finding new people that way too. Um, so just some of those methods or people reach out to, and I, I, I look at their stuff. Uh, I'm always, my big thing is I always open to give people an opportunity if they're like willing to work hard. Um, and if they're not dicks, that's a big thing in wrestling. There's a lot of defense and there's a lot of people who just aren't very nice. So if you're nice and you're willing and you have talent, um, you've got a good gimmick, you're willing to work hard or just, you know, not just in the ring, but, you know, help out with the show when asked like that goes a long way in my book. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to hear from a professional booker and how that works and just the process. So, yeah. I mean, budget's always a big thing too. This can fit yeah. the budget because it's not my company. So it's like, I don't run the budget. So that's one yeah, thing that's I always have to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finances, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All yeah. comes out of me, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you want to be paid what you're worth and you're putting your body on the line. So I totally get it. Yeah. That does make sense. Like, I mean, you do see people like uh, demanding money, but then, I mean, sometimes they're, <laughs> sometimes they're jerks, but then again, it is wrestling. You're landing on that wooden mat and breaking your back and everything. So I've broken yeah. multiple bones doing wrestling. So yeah, mm -hmm. it, it definitely is costly, especially if you're a smaller dude like me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jesse. Yeah, um, I just have one more question, then we'll let you go for a night. Uh, we had uh, Danny Duggan on our show Friday night, and he had nothing but good things to say about you. So if there's anything you wanted to say to Danny, what would you like to say to him? I would just say thank you. I mean, uh he really helped me out at the beginning of my career. Uh, he actually booked me in my very first match uh, up in Canada for his company with CWE. Um, I was very thankful for that. He booked me on a tour too, which is awesome. Uh, put me over to uh, Steel Domain too. So I got an opportunity, I think, because of Danny. So that was really cool as well. Um, I definitely paid back the favor. A lot of his uh, guys on the road would crash in my old place and crash in the couch and stuff. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was a free hotel a lot of nights. Uh, so I was glad I could help out, but yeah, I love Danny. He's a really good guy. Hopefully we can bring him back in AWF uh, this summer too. That's something I definitely want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I just, I guess one more recap of, uh, so you got a sh uh, the show this Friday for April 30th and for frozen tundra wrestling. And yep. then, uh, you got, and then you got uh, oh, a AWF uh, May 14th. Um, up in Zimmerman, Minnesota. Zimmerman, I can't talk. I'm so tired now. I'm like, Zimmerman. Uh, yeah, that'll be the, the first. I mean, I think there was taking titles like before in AWF, but it hasn't been in like multiple years. So, uh, this is the reintroduction or the first of the new AWF tag team championships. I know the roster's won it for a long time, so super excited about that. I'm break. Mm -hmm. I'll break this news on the podcast. I'll give you guys breaking news. The person <laughs> I am wrestling on May 14th, AWF and Zimmerman, uh, will be Kit Sackett. He's wrestled on AEW Dark multiple times. He's wrestled in yeah. AWF a couple times. Uh, so I'm very excited to face him for the very first time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. I've yeah. seen him. I think, I think I've actually only seen him one time on dark but i've uh i think well in person in dark but then yeah i know he's done awf stuff so yeah tagged with brandon door i think like and at target center yeah yeah mm. yeah it was so yeah and then uh i think one last thing you got a uh, below zero wrestling on the, the night after that for the one year anniversary of uh below zero so it should be a fun weekend some fun matches tag with uh nds Party, party. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a big party weekend right there. So a lot of traveling. So. <laughs> yeah, it'll yeah. definitely be a lot of traveling. It'll be a, be a long weekend, but it's always fun. So mm -hmm. I think I think on yeah. Friday it's about four hours because it's close to Madison, Wisconsin. Mm. Oh. Yeah. I've got some people coming with me, so it should be fun. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. All right. Yeah, it was awesome talking to you. Keep it or just uh, 
uh, seeing what you're up to, an update of the PD Brown's life and uh, wrestling in general. So, yeah. Well, thank you guys for having me. Um, appreciate welcome. it. Glad you guys are killing it and keeping it up. Big thing with podcasts is just keep doing it, right? How many podcasts yeah, yeah. after one? You guys are doing it every week, so keep it up. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Thank you, BD. All right. Yeah, I'll let you close, Jesse. Yeah, we just want to thank you for your time again, and we're definitely going to have you back on maybe when things aren't so crazy for you. Yeah. We'll definitely mm -hmm. have you back on again. Mm -hmm. Cheers, guys. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank so you. Shout out Liquid Death. I bet they finally came, or, trying to get on camera. Finally came to Minnesota. It's so good. It's like sparkling mm. water. I mean, they make it look hard or whatever. I mean, if it was called like da Daisy Water, maybe I wouldn't drink it. But I mean, like, try it out. It was at Target. It's so. It's like the best consistency of like Lacroix or like bubbly. It tastes really good. Highly recommend. Okay. Shout yeah, out, yeah. To the shout out. I would, I would, shout out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank you again, PD, and uh, hope you have a nice night. Cheers, guys. Take care. Yep, live is ending. Well, there, that 